but you're not a Cheeto person? And I'm, why am I craving Cheetos? You know? Or like when you're really hungry on those things, you like eat a saltine cracker, and you're like, this tastes amazing. It really doesn't. You're just hungry. It's a saltine cracker. It's not supposed to taste great. <laughs> All right? Well, what else do you think of with, with fasting? We have put fasting primarily with what? Food. Food. Okay? Now, there's not, it's not a mystery. Why? Because the Bible talks about fasting every single time it's in relation to food. I want to suggest to you that fasting from other things than food and food is not a bad thing either. Um, uh, with my students, we always did something um, around Easter where Pentecost, we would give up something for 30 days and we'd talk about it. Not all the kids, but you know, I had a kid one day, you know, one Pentecost raised hand, I'm going to give up TV for 30 days. And everybody's like, whoa, dude, no sports in? That's, that's pretty awesome. And we're all turning around with him and he goes, wait, no, no I'm going to give up table salt. And I go, how do you go from TV to table salt? Like, you just took a really big jump and then never mind. Um, and so uh, here's what it is. It's the voluntary denial of an otherwise normal function for the sake of intense spiritual activity, okay? Which means giving up something that you really love. Okay, giving something up that, that you really love, that you really look forward to every day. The point of that is when your heart or when your flesh or when your taste buds desire that item, you immediately go, I love you. Thank you. I really want to play Destiny right now. Okay, I said that for job. I was going to it for three years. It's time to get a new video game. I'll pay half. <laughs> uh, uh, or give up that, that specific type of food, or you give up that TV show, or you, whatever it is, you just say, you know what, I'm not, don't, don't turn around and go, no broccoli for me, man, I'm done with vegetables. No, it's got to be something that you love, okay, that's the key. It's got to be something that you love. This verse says, and when you fast, and I, I want you to listen to this verse, I want you, you tell me what jumps out to you here, because there's something that should really scream to us, okay, and when you fast, don't make it obvious, as the hypocrites do, for they try to look miserable and disheveled so people admire them for their fasting. I tell you the truth, that's the only word they will ever get. What do you notice? What is it saying about fasting? When are you going to do it? Eventually, you're going to do it, right? Because the text says we have a transition advice here. And when you fast, it's assuming, Christ follower, you're going to eventually be in a place where you fast. You will fast. And it's like all of a sudden, it's like, oh, no. Here's what's embarrassing for me as a crush ball. You guys are probably a little too young to remember this guy, but there was a guy named Akeem Elijah once, played for the Houston Rockets, was a Muslim. He would fast for Ramadan or something like that, for like 42 days, still play basketball. Still play basketball. He, at a high level, okay? Here's what we've come to believe. As soon as we were having a moment, I'm so busy, I don't play Listen, you guys, you'd be surprised how long you go without food. I'm not saying water. You can go a long time without food. God forbid if something were to happen right now and we were locked down in here, we would be okay for several weeks without food. And you would go, no, no. You would. I worked for a pastor one time. He fasted 41 days. He had water, but he did not eat for 41 days. Now, here's the thing, and I'll tell you, because I've done a little bit longer, not longer than 41 days, but I've done a long fast. The first day, it is terrible. You get headaches. And your body starts to emit odors that are just wrong. <laughs> I mean, it's just like, what is, what is that? But around that 34th day, you'd be surprised. You're like, oh my gosh, I'm good. I'm good. If you choose to fast, you teach fasting. One thing, and this is in the material, make sure they know it's nobody's business. It's not a tweet. Okay, I'm fasting. Look at me. No, no, you got to encourage them not to do that. Okay? Because that's a real personal thing with God. Are you telling me anything that fasting allows me to hear God better? I very confidently tell you that. Okay, that it does. But I want to tell you that it is not easy. It's not an easy thing to engage upon. Now, some of you, you might be so disciplined or your body might be so conditioned, it will not be a problem for you. Okay, just because you're just, you have good will. You just have a strong will. So you're like, I'm not good for two or three days. Ain't no way. You've got to operate your same deal. You've got to continue your life in the same way. That's what makes it really, really good. And if you look in the Bible, and the question is, Nathan, when were people fasting the Bible? Anytime a big decision needed to be made. Anytime there was something crucial 
fasting was a part of prayer life. It wasn't just prayer. It was prayer and fasting. So I would encourage you as your brother, if you're coming up with some big decisions, I would maybe refrain from some food. Start slow. Don't do something crazy. I don't want to go too greedy. Try a day or two. Maybe just fruit and water and see how that goes. But you will be grateful for what you do have. And you will be surprised about what you pray. But it feels good to give stuff up for God and, and focus on Him. So fasting is a fantastic thing. Uh, just don't always make it about food, especially this weekend. Encourage them to give stuff up that they love. Get offline. Do these kind of things because uh, it really helps. Um, do I have any question about fasting that I can answer for you? Or try to, anyway? Um, if you do not have access to Richard Foster's Celebration of the Disciplines, get access. Get it on your Kindle. Get it on your iPad. Whatever. It is a fantastic book. Or go old school and buy the book. It is a great book. It changed my life years ago. And I read it all the time still. It's, it's a great book. Um, the second thing is that meditation. What do you think of when you hear meditation? Yes. Eastern mysticism. You know, one of these deals, you know, I got to center myself. I actually wrote a devotional on for Saturday about this, so I'm going to give it away. But um, I always thought that. I was introduced to it in a spiritual discipline class, and I thought my, my professor was a flaming liberal. I mean, that's, that's what went through my mind. I was like, oh, my gosh, what's next? Find your love. You know, you talk to me about meditation. I'm thinking about fried rice, man. I mean, I'm thinking about little Buddha every time I walk, walk into the steakhouse. Right? So, um, but that's not what this is about. Meditation is this. It's the ability to hear God's voice and obey his word. Listen to this in Isaiah 55. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your uh, ways my ways, declares the Lord. For the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. What we have going on with this is, there's got to be this way where we tune into God. We are super, super busy. All of us are. We have our headphones on. We're doing this. Meditation is a thing where you're just like, I'm just going to focus on God. I'm going to think about God. I'm going to go through a story in the Bible about God. And meditation will get you there. Even a, a prayer or a verse or something over and over again. If you can somehow teach these guys to slow down, that would be amazing. Because here's what's sad. You're, some of you are adults, adults, some of you are young adults. Here's what I tell the college students here, okay? You think you're busy now. You feel like you're busy now. Wait till there's a mortgage, or a wife, or a kid, or a, a dumpy boss. Or wait till all that stuff comes at you. If you can't organize your time now and give God some, you will not do it after you get married. I guarantee you, it will not work out that way. Meditation, my opinion, I believe is the best way to get them to learn what, how important it is to pause. How important it is to pause. You just got to stop. And meditation is that thing where we focus, focus, focus. And I'll give you an example. Everybody, bow your heads and close your eyes. Let me show you how this works. You ready? Don't think of marshmallows. Exactly. Okay? Everybody thought of our, our brain is this thing that is working all the time. If we can train it to focus on the things of God, you and I are better. Because then we'll hear God when we slow down. Meditation is the way that it is done. And for the record, according to the date of our scriptures in the Old Testament, we were meditating for the of us. It is all over the Old Testament. It belonged to us. We allowed it to be taken because we turned it into the, um, that's not what it is. Okay, little Phil Keggy, and you're just thinking about the things of God, go over a Bible story, think about the things of God. Meditation, I think, I hope is the strongest lesson. I feel like it's the strongest lesson I wrote because that's near and dear to my heart and it's something that changed my life years ago. It's something I still incorporate today. Any questions about meditation? Put your own stuff. Also, listen, you're going to know some of my material. It's not so guided that it's not going to take your personality. I don't write that way because it's too easy. Some of this material is so easy, you could just pick it up and you you get you're never in there. You get lost. I don't want that. God has created these individuals, and you need to put you in that material. You need to put you in there, okay? So you'll see these gaps where you need to put some questions. You need to go be transparent with these kids. Don't try to be something you're not because they will know in their heart you're a phony. Man, if you're you need to if you feel this way about fasting, go look. We're going to talk about fasting. I'm telling you right now. I don't know how I feel about it. I liked me some food. 
By the way, have y'all eaten at that place, Jazzy or Jazz? Yes. Yeah. What is going on over there? It is. Uh, it is. It is amazing. Fried zucchini. It is. I cannot believe how good that food is. Who wants the best? Throw up your hands. <laughs> so, but uh, just talk that way to them. Don't try to come. I'm a leader. Let me be super spiritual, man. Don't do that. You're not, you're not fooling God. You can fool them, but you're not. Talk about the struggles of spiritual discipline, all right? Because fasting will be one of the big ones, but talk to them about the meditation, the struggle with that. And let me end with this one. And this one is, is I'm not going to, this one is hard. This one's super hard. Okay, you're talking to, I have a Kindle, I have an iPad, I have an iPhone. I've got a couple PlayStation 4s, so I like technology stuff. Simplicity is sort of the exact opposite of that. Um, it's an inward reality that results in an outward lifestyle. And I think when we hear simplicity, we go, well, here's this guy who's trying to talk off the mountain. You need to be simplistic. That is simplicity, but that is not the discipline of simplicity. The discipline of simplicity is doing with less, being able to survive doing with less. Okay? It looks like this. Matthew 26, 6 through 7. That is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life. Right now, if you're honest, I'm going to be. We're all guilty right now. As this scripture begins, you and, I are, you and I are worried about something, and this is what we're passing down to these guys. Okay, I got teenagers with, with anxiety dogs, okay? That's how anxious they are these days, all right? We've passed that down. This is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life, whether you have enough food and drink or enough clothes to wear. Isn't life more than food and your body more than clothing? Look at the birds. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns, and yet your heavenly Father cares for them. Aren't you far more valuable to him than they? And all your worries at a single moment to your life. Simplicity is going, I'm not going to focus on it. Okay. Simplicity is, I'm going to take this job for less money because I'm actually happy doing that. Okay? Simplicity is, I'm not going to feel the weight of a university, personally speaking to me, that my daughter's college is completely paid for 100%. Don't take the job at first level. Because you're going to give that up. You will, her cop is gone. Simplicity says, I got you, Nathan. Go to love it. I got work for you to do there. I like where you go. Didn't ask. I need to go to love it. You're the one that calls yourself my son. And your father's telling you to go to love it. Common sense says, stay in Waco. Stay there. Free college education for your daughter. Nobody would disagree with me. Especially people putting their kids through school. Stay in Waco. Simplicity says and beckons to me, God's saying, I got this. Don't get caught up in the things of the world for one simple reason. The world will let you down. The world's going to let you down. If you love money, that's a problem. Why? Because you can lose money. Okay? Simplicity says, I'm going to trust God. I'm going to rest in him even when it doesn't make sense. Like Hosea. Hey, Jose, I'm a prophet. I'm a prophet. I like talking about you. I know, Jose. Thank you. I need you to marry a prostitute. I don't want to marry you. Please? <laughs> no? <laughs> what does simplicity say? God's saying, I got you. Don't worry about the world. Because we love God in here, it's got a result in our lifestyle. Having stuff is not the problem with simplicity. The problem is when our stuff has us. When it controls us, when it controls our emotions. Do you really do you believe that a video game system can control some of these emotions? It can. I've heard it online in my ear, probably nine years old. Very creative with cussing these children. Okay? So you have to encourage them with this discipline of simplicity. Do not count on the world. Don't count on the world. Simplicity says God has got you. Okay? It'll be the hardest lesson, in my opinion. It'll be the hardest lesson all, all week, because that's something that I think we overall, I think fasting and meditation is a process we can teach. Simplicity is more of a hard matter. It's more of a hard matter. And it's, it's tough. It's a, it's a tough one. Try to do some outside reading if you can for that and, and throw you in there. Any questions about this? Comments or anything? If you need me, if you're looking at the material, I'll, I'm not the, I'll be around. So text me or call me. Go, hey, what do you mean by this? Or could you, could you, yeah, I'm here. Just, uh, I'll, I'll do that for you. All right? We good? Cool. Um, I missed out on, you, you guys know that the, the students are going to get a book with blanks in it. Remember where you got them? Did you say that already? No. Mm -hmm. No, I thought that was a few pastors. Well, anyway, yeah, okay, thank you. <laughs>
at 6 o'clock on Friday is when I need you here. We're going to have a meal together, and then I'm going to give you guys some instructions about how to um, make sure all your students have seat belts and all that fun stuff. Uh, You'll have an underline in your booklet with the blanks and all that, and they'll have the blanks. But I want them to write because when they write, so you're saying it, they're writing it, we just have two little memory things there going on with that. So that, that'll be good, and it's something you guys can, can keep and try not to print it out and put it in another library and get money for it because I can talk about it. <laughs> that happened. I, did, I wrote a devotional, took it to Super Summer Camp, and <laughs> gave it to some kids, and somebody called me, hey, that devotional's in our library, what library at our church? Some guy just printed it off, sold it for 10 bucks, kept selling it, yeah. So one of my pastor friends like got my back on it, and I received the check, and <laughs> just from this church, like, hey, we're really sorry. Christians are scumbags. No, no, on this stuff, this is all free. If you go into ministry, take it with you. Don't get money from it, but you give it away too. I don't know that you get anything for it anyway. But anyway, what is that? Yeah. No, I'm just saying no. That's the main thing is that you're not making money. I'm glad I get to work with you. Yeah. All right. Anything else? Thank you, Nate. All right, man. Appreciate it, brother. Yeah. Can I do something else for you tonight? Yeah. Talking to my students. Okay, I got the, uh, let me go right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. What's up, brother? How's your name? How's your name? Good. Good. All right. Hey, let me pray for you guys. I would love you. Thank you so much for these students, uh, small group leaders, just giving up their week, their weekend, uh, and just preparing uh, for uh, just what you have in store for them. God, we give you thanks uh, for the opportunity. Just use us, mold us. Let us be uh, open to your spirit and moving in. Uh, we just pray for the conversations that are going to happen. For your truth to bring in the hearts of these students. For us. And our own. Give me thanks. Amen. Amen. Okay. Right. Can I check with them? Did y'all all get the email, the background check form for me, from me? Yeah. yeah. I accidentally mistyped some of y'all's emails the first time, so I had to resend an email. But Everybody um, has the email. Thankfully, the, the main 